It's time for the Is Wiz with Mads Maddest writer Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1838, recorded Thursday, July 1st, 2021. Objects in mirror may look crappy. episode of the Giz Whiz, we have the most expensive coffee gadget we've ever covered. I have a brand new theme for this month and it is awesome and we get to find out what the heck was it all next on the Giz Whiz. It's the same old show with Dickie D and OMG chat on your PC. It's time for the Gizwiz because gadgets are his business. They've got a gizmo sickness, geek disease. Under pathology. Rows and rows of USBs. Growing blue and LEDs. Get ready for the Gizwiz now. Now! Now! And here he is, our gadget entrepreneur, Dickie D. How wow. you doing, Dickie D? Wow, entrepreneur? Yeah. That's, that's pretty good. I was inspired by the most expensive coffee gadget. I was thinking, <laughs> what? Who buys an expensive coffee gadget? Entrepreneurs. Uh, yeah, that's who. Uh, well, uh, I'll, uh, I can answer that question. Nice. When, when we get to the spot. Well, I can tell you now. Uh, I, I was thinking the same thing. Uh, and the in the press release, it said that their sales were up almost 7% over the last year, closing in on a half a million Espresso makers in a oh. year. Oh, I thought it was sale. I was like half a million dollars in sales. That's pretty good. No, no, not half, half a million, million units. Units. Holy moly! Exactly. Exactly. How do, you, how do you even make a half a million of anything? I, that's why I yeah, don't. I know. I think you know. I've gone through the process of like I don't know making a tie dye shirt or like a personal <laughs> button. You know, that's difficult right. to do. And then I hear like Apple sells, you know, six million of an iPhone. It's <laughs> like, yes, who? I know. How? How did six million things get made? That's just insane. Um, you know, six. I know. Something had to happen six million times for that thing to exist. Yes. It's crazy. Yes. Half well, you know, million. what's interesting is. Uh, the surge pricing on Amazon, uh, I'm doing uh, for ABC in a week, I'm doing gadgets for the outdoors. And I thought, oh, neck fans are great. And um, I think we're going to shoot it in the park and I'm going to shoot it with one of the hosts. And I thought, you know, I better buy him his own neck fan so he doesn't wear a neck fan that I've worn. Right. And because of the heat wave, <laughs> the, it used to be $24. It was Forty dollars. Ah, what? <laughs> yeah, it's they're starting to trickle back on down, but I'm thinking, whoa, these are ridiculous. And the funny time is, every time I uh, I went to it, it was twenty six. I went back to look at something, it was twenty eight. I went back again, it was thirty two. Um, <laughs> so it's kind of interesting, is how. The weather or something like that can just drive prices crazy. Yeah. And I'm not quite sure why they started dropping down when I look today because the heat wave still seems to be in full swing. We got a, We had a tremendous storm last night. It knocked the temperature down here. But it was, I think, 86 was the low during the night. And it was 98 during the day with a real feel of 105. But I saw Pac and W, his normal temperature, I think he's uh, maybe in Portland, was 117. And I, my older sister used to live in Portland. Nobody has AC units up there, okay? Yes. <laughs> this is like the area of the United States where people open a window to control the temperature. Um, Eastern Oregon says Pac and W. So, oh, oh, okay, okay. We have yeah. AC, so you will survive. <laughs> then, hooray! Wonderful. Oh my gosh! A and I remember Dennis and I were in Las Vegas for, I, I think, the Hardware Show, which is in the summer, and it was also 117. And at the airport, they first they announced. People would board the plane two at a time because the jetway was so hot <laughs> that 
no one would, they didn't want anybody waiting yeah. to get on the airplane. So they're yeah. going to send people out two at a time because the jet was so hot. And then they came back and they said, ladies and gentlemen, now we're going to take a vote. It turns out that it's so hot that the airplane cannot take off with a full load of fuel. So we have to vote. Do you want to leave 12 people here <laughs> by, I don't know how they're going to decide that. Right. A and, and go direct to New York. Or do you want everybody on the airplane with a fuel stop halfway to New York? Because I, I guess the heat doesn't let, I don't know what the heat does on an airplane. But anyway, does jet fuel it, it, expand in the heat? Yeah, something, <laughs> something. Uh, so the people voted take everybody and and make a fuel stop, uh, which they did, and it they managed to have truck standing by. So it was the flight was only like forty five minutes late. Yes, because he said fuel stop. He's even voting on it here. <laughs> exactly. But exactly. Th that's the hottest I've been in, and that. It, not the best. I remember in yeah. Texas uh, during one summer, it was like 120, and I was <gasps> working at a summer camp. And I remember that day vividly because it was, you know, when it gets that hot, you you move from air-conditioned space to air-conditioned space, you know. Like, even getting out of the car to a building is just unbearable. And um, I remember that w w at the summer camp, a lot of the kids were like, okay, we're done with lunch. Can we go outside and play? <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, we don't know if you should, you know? And some of them were like, we want to. And they ran outside and they ran around. And, and we made sure, you know, they were hydrated when they came back in. But I remember oh like, gosh. man, these kids are insane. Uh, yeah. So. Oh, Scooter X, air is less dense when it's hot. So that must affect oh. how the plane flies. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. That's crazy. All right. <clears throat> Are you doing anything for 4th of July? No. I, uh, I mean, other than like the local area fireworks and whatnot, everyone around here is having them on the 3rd on Saturday. So I'll be doing something on the 3rd. Uh, and why are they doing that? I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's a <laughs> church thing, but the city of Dallas is doing stuff on the third. You know, the, every, all the surrounding areas are doing stuff on the third. Oh, you know, um, maybe they do that because on the fourth, everybody is in front of the TV watching all the fireworks around the country. Yeah. I get awesome. the fourth, it does fall on a Sunday. So I was wondering, you know, I think that that has something to do with it, but. Oh, okay. Um, Mr. Does Texas Dave still said, have I didn't blue? even know. What were the blue laws? Does Texas still have blue laws, Mr. Dave asks? Blue laws. Is that oh, uh, I I, I, alcohol? No alcohol. Yeah. I think. There, yeah, we do. Definitely. Yeah. You no, still have you that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. On a Sunday, you can't um, buy alcohol at a, at a uh, liquor store. They're closed. Oh, yeah, it was a shock. You know, you, you kind of forget some things when I moved to California. <laughs> California, you can buy hard alcohol at a gas station, you know. And here in, in Texas, you, you the only thing is beer and, and uh, wine. And same thing at a grocery store. You have to go to a liquor store to get oh, okay. hard alcohol. And when I travel around with Brushwood, um, you know, before Twit days, that was one of the weirdest things is figuring out how, how we had to get alcohol you know that was not an option was not to get alcohol it was just no, how we were going to get right? it when we landed in a new place every day it was like okay what are the laws here where do we go what do we do oh my gosh and oh it's insane gosh. how how different liquor laws are across america so yeah 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 I, maybe that's yeah. it actually everyone all of the municipalities realized no one's going to be able to buy alcohol on Sunday. Oh, maybe. <laughs> so let's throw our parties on Saturday. Oh, oh that's funny. That's funny. Know. Maybe. Maybe not. 
Uh, let's jump into some gadgets. Okay, we? let's do it. All right, so as I mentioned last week, I, uh, for the first time ever, I went to an in-person show. And in 2020, my last in-person show was the Housewares Preview. And my first uh, in-person show this year was the, House Pre, uh, the Housewares Preview, uh, 17 months apart. So we're going to look at, this is the most expensive coffee maker I've seen. It's not out till September, so here's a look. It's the new Z or Z10. It is touchscreen, 32 specialties to choose from. It is the new Z10 hot and cold coffee specialty machine. I'd love to show you how you can take and make an iced beverage with this as well. Okay. Want to see that? Yeah, do that. So I actually am taking my glass here. Make sure I get my Jira logo right there in the front <laughs> nicely there. All about presentation. And all I have to do is touch this screen right here on the top. So we look at the screen here where it says uh, espresso. That will be a cold brew. It is grinding. So it has an automatic grind adjustment, meaning that every single coffee in this machine, you can adjust the grinder to a finer or a coarser setting. There's five different settings you can choose from, and each individual in your household can actually choose your own, which is great. Remember it? And it saves it and remembers it for you. Oh my God. So this is the extraction oh process God, right now. We are now brewing, it's pressure brewed coffee, but it is going through a new brewing process, which is not going through a heater, it's actually by passing that so you're getting a nice cold brew extraction so instead of taking 18 or 24 hours for a cold brew a traditional cold brew you're now getting it automatically within minutes and how much coffee can this hold? This holds about 10 ounce uh, bean capacity. Our premium and our higher end division holds about 10 ounces, a little over 80 plus in the uh, water reservoir. A beautiful design here, illuminated, uh, with a wave design on the water reservoir there. And then, so here is this beautiful- this is a milk foamer on the side. Yes, it is. Dick, you gotta like, basically, do you drink up? You, you drink coffee. I do. Thank goodness. <laughs> Tell everybody how good that is and that it's a cold brew. It should be fresh. Um, it's freshly ground. Nice and strong. Absolutely strong. Not very acidic. It's got a nice smoothness to it. As well as there. So very excited about that. Yes, this is also new for us. It's our new 0.6 uh, cool control. The cool control, which is really awesome because it's a great accessory to our machines. If you like those milk specialties, this is 0.6 ounces on there. It's a very nice slim design and it has a level indicator there. So as the milk runs down, that will also go uh, black or gray and then it will tell you when you need to refill. Now, this is not refrigerated. It is not refrigerated. It's basically doing the refrigeration for you on your countertop. So basically, this stays on your countertop with your machine. It's like having a refrigerator on oh, your that's countertop. What I meant. So yes, oh my God. 39 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's basically at that proper temperature to where your milk will stay fresh on there on the countertop. And then this is also fun too. This is just another bobble or another accessory to really give you that whole premium look. You have your milk solution. You've got your beautiful milk pipe with stainless steel casing, and you've got the perfect machine to go with it. Okay. So let's do just the price of the machine and okay. then the price of everything we see. You got it. All right. So this machine is only $3,999. So for $4,000, okay. you're getting this machine. For this nice accessory piece right here, that retails for $60. So it's a nice uh, it's a nice accent piece. Gives a, l a little bit of finesse to the machine. And for $259, you're getting the milk solution and the 0.6 cool control. So 260, 320, so about 400 and, uh, I'm sorry, 400, 4,360. I almost gave it away. Um, so about $4,400, you're getting the whole experience. It's really beautiful. Yeah. And this just came out? This is coming out in September. It's launching in September. It, it already made its debut in Europe to a huge success and a sellout. Man, I love... Uh, PR people who are like him, who just know <laughs> literally everything about the product. Everything, <laughs> everything. And, and, and it's very funny because uh, he's also lighthearted about it. Of course, when he's making the coffee, he says, turn the logo to the front. Right, exactly. Product, yeah. pl product placement is everything. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Oh, my gosh. Well, obviously, yes, it's expensive. But uh, yes. 
the best of the best. I mean, this is you this know, is this a Lamborghini is the kind of thing that that uh, CEOs are going to have and think right. nothing of it and say, "Oh my goodness." Uh, I'm, I'm just looking at some things. So everything's programmable. I believe it can remember with five people how they like their coffee, with the amount of milk they want in it, uh, how hot or cold they want the foam. There are 10 different degrees, all programmable, programmable to how hot the coffee is going to be. And they didn't use the word technology once, but they wow. do have... And a PRG, which is the product recognizing grinder, huh. so that when you select one of the, I think he said 38 things the machine can make, the grinder knows how to grind the beans for oh. that so if uh, you're having, specialty. Yes, I see. So if you're just having a normal drip, it might do more coarse. If you're having espresso, it, it might yeah, go more yeah. fine. It, 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 fine, unless you change it and tell it, no, no, no. Right. I, I want know it what finer I'm doing. than that. <laughs> right. Finer than that. Wow. Uh, yeah. Holy so, holy. yeah, it's pretty neat. But they yeah. do make nice. Um, they also used to own uh, Capresso. I've had many oh. uh, Capresso machines, but I believe recently uh, someone else bought Capresso. Uh, so in the fall, and it's from Jura, and they're in Switzerland. And if you want to look at anything about it, if you go to the Jura website, it's not there. Uh, but if you're up at top, click from U.S. to international, and then on the international website, it does come up. That is crazy. And a cold brew espresso instantly seems so cool. Yeah. Like, it was, and it it tasted amazing. really great. And, and awesome. they have all these other things that he was explaining. It's like when the water goes through the grinds, it goes through like in six different places, as opposed to it coming out of a spout and just going through the grinds. Right. Um, it's injected into the grinds. It's six different places. Um, anyway, if you love coffee and you have a, uh, unlimited funds. And you can wait till the fall. If you have unlimited funds, just order it from Switzerland. Then you <laughs> right, get exactly. If you have unlimited <laughs> funds, you probably have that guy's email who was on the video. <laughs> you just thought, tell him, send it. Send That's, it quicker. Yeah. Come over here and make that. Yeah. <laughs> if you have unlimited funds, please become a patron of uh, the Gizmo. Yeah. Uh, that'd be great. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah. Remember we told you about the $39 coffee pot? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now that leaves you with like $3,990 uh, some odd dollars. <laughs> um, okay. Down to something um, a little more inexpensive. Everything else on the show is now inexpensive. Um I met this fascinating woman, and she'll sort of tell um, what she did. It's pretty amazing. Here we go. So we thought we'd look at something a little lower priced, okay? And I walked by, and what's your name? D.V. McNally. D.V. said, do you want to learn about the drying stone, all right? So we're going to find out, what is a drying stone? Well, it's a natural material that we have incorporated into our design of our sinkware collection that, that has a dr natural drying um, uh, capability. It's, it's a natural, yes, it does. So how it <laughs> works is like. Yeah, so if you just can see here. It, it dries naturally. And it's 100% antimicrobial. So it's a natural anti-germ environment. So it's not going to create mildew or mold or... Um, and know, is that for the life of the stone? The entire life of the stone. And it's very strong and durable. It doesn't chip or break. Um, and it's easy to clean. And it's, it's, we actually won a German award first place for this design. And we're excited to launch it. We now have it available on Amazon. And it's, it's going to be a very long term product. It's not, it's not trendy. It's very relevant to today's time, but it's good for, you know, anybody, and, anywhere, in any kitchen, at any time. And what's it going to retail for? Around $30. Around $30. And it, does it come with the plates to stand your plates right. and the utensils? It does. This comes completely uh, as a set. Actually, let's go the box. And if I wanted to remove that, could I remove it and just have more stone? Yes, you can. Oh, that's really great. Yeah, it's easy to clean, too. And this is actually infused with antimicrobial as well. 
So the entire environment for drying your dishes is going to be a sanitized environment. Oh, okay. Uh, that's it, Made Smart. And you're the founder. I am. Oh, look at it at the bottom of the box. Women owned. That's right. And can we tell people how much you, uh, how much the company made last year? You started this by yourself? I did. I started with the original junk drawer organizer when I was 25 years old. And now I have over 500, 500 products that I manufacture in China and high quality, low cost. Um, and I've been selling to major retailers now, Target, Walmart, TJ Maxx, uh, Lowe's. So you're a multi-million dollar business? Yes. A multi-20 million dollar business? 50 million. Yeah. 50 million dollars. But it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's something to aspire to that's really great. Here at the Houseware Show, looking for fun stuff. Uh, she should be the next shark on Shark Tank. That's amazing. Yes. <laughs> she started with the junk drawer organizer, which was like a silverware thing, except different sized uh, uh, inserts to drop stuff in. And that was such a hit that she just kept adding to it and adding to it. And as you heard, she... Last year, they made $50 million. That's amazing. That's great. Isn't that? Yeah. So I'm a uh, little... Okay, so, so she said 30, so it's just a, a bit more. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I actually like that thing. I like the fact that it it just dries stuff uh, yeah. quickly. So like I have a like a drying pad almost, and it's like co oh, uh, cotton, you know, that sort of thing. And so this is kind of nice because... It's a solid surface. I feel like if it is, if it's you know truly antimicrobial, that's really nice. Um, and the amount of times that I really need to you know set something out to dry it is kind of not that often. Uh, I I'm lucky enough to have a you know dishwasher instead of uh, hand uh, uh, yeah. washing. But uh, this is this is really cool. I didn't realize that they also made smaller versions too. I'm seeing some of the smaller. No, I didn't didn't know either. Sizes. That's cool. It definitely looks a lot nicer than my uh, my pad, my <laughs> drying pad kind of. That's <laughs> right. It looks like a, a house mat, you know, just kind of sitting there on the counter. Uh, that's cool. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so, yeah, made cool. smart. And um, it is 32, what was it, 3210 or something? 32, 3231. 32, 32, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, and finally, uh, I stopped by Built because Built makes uh, all kinds of lunch boxes and and uh, picnic things, and so I was surprised to see that they are venturing into something else. And this is it. We're here at Built now. Built usually has lunch boxes and lunch devices, but. We see a picture of a doggy, so we're going to find out from Corey what the deal is. With the, what's the deal with the dog? <laughs> so, Corey, what do we have now? So, right now, we just released our leashes, collars, a little walk bag, and an excursion sling. So, what's special about our leash and collar? We have a reflective threading, so at nighttime, you could walk safely. Everyone will see you. Uh, okay, and for the people watching the show, we ran out of my cable. That's why you see my cable in here. Uh, so this is reflective. And this little bag is? It's for your little poop bag. So when your dog does a little, you know, number two, you can pick it up. And it has like a little attachment and a Velcro attachment here. So when you're walking, it doesn't swing around. Oh, okay. And then there's, this one is? A little poop bag and treat bag. Oh, okay. Okay. Very good. And finally, this guy. This guy is one of my favorites favorite items so this is for when you go hiking or to dog park you have your little poop bag treat bag and personal items pocket and this is a little bottle that we made to go with it so you drink from the bottle and you can pour out some water for your buddy oh very good very good and it's the retail on that the retail on this is 25 uh, 24.99 and oh, that's very good yeah. That's great. It's just the way it is with the bottle and, and the bag and the collar thing. Oh, the bottle is... No, no, this, oh, the bottle's extra. Yeah, the bottle is extra. I believe it is... Hold on. I have it here. Sorry. Okay, we have a cheat sheet in the back. <laughs> yeah, so, so actually the 
the bottle is fifteen dollars and the sling is twenty five. Okay, twenty five for the sling with the two bags, mm -hmm. and then the bottle is extra, and it's from Bills. Yeah. Are they out now? Yes, it's out on our site right now. Right now, uh, built and stuff, fun stuff for your dog. Charlie will love it. Okay, woof. <laughs> That's goodbye in dog talk. Woof. That's cool. And looking at their yeah, website. I, like, I, I do uh, like that shoulder thing, right? Uh, yeah. So far, it is just on their website, and most of it says pre-order. So, yeah. oh, I see. Okay, not everything says. Oh, actually, I think it might have changed in the past yeah. day. It, it, everything updated. had said pre yeah. pre-order, so I guess... They and so I now. think that that sling actually comes with the bottle. It's in all the images. Um, and yeah, I think you know, if, but, if you want an oh, extra maybe bottle, she was wrong. Oh, okay. if you want an extra bottle, it's fifteen. Um, oh, it, great! It seems like it's included here. And in, you in know all what? Promos. It seems to say that this innovative. See uh, product details. There it is. Um, <clears throat> oh, it says fits our bottle. Ah. What? <sighs> Bottle sold so separately. I, Available now for pre-order. Oh, okay. Dang it! Okay, okay. I was <laughs> convinced. I don't I was, know, because I thought, gee, that's really inexpensive. Yeah. Because the stuff is very nicely made. And uh, they had a, a, a little video there running that I couldn't find on their website. The, th those things with the woven... Uh, illuminated thread or yeah. reflective thread is uh, really uh, nice. Oh, 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 you know, I, actually, you can sort of see when you just go over it with. Uh, there you go. There it is. Boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks really nice at night. Oh, that's very. very it almost cool. <laughs> it almost looks like an old hotel sign blinking on. I <laughs> know, no, no but, vacancy. But it, no but it doesn't vacancy. do that. No. Right, it right. That. It's also interesting. Um, it looks like there's two handles on it. You have this one further back, and then one a little closer if you want your dog to walk right next oh, to you. Oh, that's oh yes. Dude, that's and great. I have seen that in the in the blinkiness. Here's the close up. Yes. Oh, yes, really that is good. Neat. Like when you're walking and they're getting near another dog and you're not sure you want right. them on the longer leash, you have a way to hold them back. That is so cool. Yeah. So the stuff yeah. the stuff is uh, very nice looking and looks very well made. And, and Built has been around for a long time. Not quite sure why they wanted to <laughs> go into such a competitive market, but <laughs> they did. <laughs> That is cool. Is this some, yeah. So, do you still have more from the show, or no? That was that it. it. Just the the, the oh, um, um, gonna do something with Hamilton Beach in in a couple of weeks. Cool. I'm getting that new coffee pot that makes your first cup of coffee in ninety seconds. Nice, perfect. So perfect. that is going to be good. Perfect. Um, all right. Well, that is uh, it for the houseware show. And that brings us to something brand new, you know a you theme. Don't need it, but you might want it at Chad's Crappy Corner. Get it. Okie dokie. New month, new theme. So I'll give uh, I'll give the uh, options to you, Dickie D. Okay, I was good at this, and last time I got it totally wrong. So five dollars and under gadgets, that's, bicycle that's, gadgets has returned because last okay month, okay that was, that was pretty popular and waterproof gadgets. Five dollars oh, and under. You know I'm gonna bicycle. go for five and under. Waterproof. Am I terribly wrong? Here we go. Let's check out the results. I hope they haven't changed since noon. They haven't. Bicycle gadgets is. The winner, Dickie D, you're losing your touch. Five dollars and under was the last of of the of the options. Um, I, I may have I may have shocked your internet out of existence. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Are you back with me, Dickie D? I think we lost yes. it for just a second. I didn't hear a word you said, but uh, but <laughs> bike gadgets won. Yes, bike gadgets won. Okay. Five dollars and under is uh, uh, was the last place. Oh um, my god! I know, I know. You'll get it. You'll get it soon. You'll get it soon. Soon, okay. Uh, so bicycle gadgets is the theme, and I don't have the gadget with me because it's attached to my bicycles. 
Oh, so okay. I, I recorded a video about it. So let's check that out. Perfect. Hey, Diggity. So here we are with a new month and a new gadget theme. I'm sure that we've already discussed it on the show, but it is Bike Gadget Month, which I'm super excited about because obviously I just got a brand new bike. So for the first gadget, I wanted to show one that I personally purchased for my own bike. And it is right here. It's a little bit hard to see, but this is actually a flip out mirror so that you can see behind you on a bike. Now, this bike doesn't have any integrated mirror as part of it, so I wanted to uh, to add an extra mirror, but I didn't love the look of those sort of huge mirrors that kind of hang out above the, the handlebar and uh, kind of get in the way of things. So I wanted a small, tiny mirror. And so I found this one on Amazon and it goes right into the handlebar. Right here, there's a little plug and there's one on the other side. So if you wanted to add fun tassels to your handlebars, you could, <laughs> or you could add this little mirror. Um, it has a big fish eye to it. So I'm not sure if you can see me, but uh, there is quite a lot of fish wow. eye to this mirror. And a lot of the promotional shots, they had it had this uh, point where it articulates over here. And I thought, well, that's silly. I don't want to be looking at my mirror through my handlebar. So I put that point right here. And in general, it is pretty small um, and it distorts a lot. And so I would say it's actually not that great of a mirror. In fact, I kind of don't think that it works super well. Basically at night, the only thing that it's good for is being able to tell that there are lights behind me and that's about it. And during the day I have to kind of squint to see if I can actually see anything in this mirror. So to be honest, I don't recommend it. I would recommend a much larger mirror even though I decided not to go for that. So it's kind of like a little bit better than turning around <laughs> and looking over your shoulder <laughs> slightly. Uh, but not by much, so it doesn't work super great. It was around $32 on Amazon. Um, I'm gonna keep it on there because I love how low profile it is. It is a small backup, but in the end, I, I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't recommend it. Back to you guys in the studio. Uh, so it is $32, like you saw, and I forgot to mention that there is an option if you don't want to put it into the handle that it comes with a silicone cover. So you can just put that cover onto the bike handle. So that's kind of how this is, is it's like, uh, like a glove over the handle. Or you can remove the little stopper on your handle and then have it completely integrated in there um, like, like I had it. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, so the downsides are the mirror is very small. The fisheye kind of distorts it so much that you can't really tell how far away things are. Um, it's good for basically awareness of something behind you, but something larger would be much more usable and, and, and much safer, to be honest. So it kind of gives you an impression that something might be back there, but it's not good enough to really judge anything other than that. <laughs> So if that's if that's enough for you, it's super low profile and integrates really well into the handle, uh, but that's about all it does. Thirty-two dollars okay. from Amazon. So we'll have more bike gadgets to come. Any any questions? Any anything? No. No. Okay. Perfect. Cool. perfect. Well, let's jump into Dick's Gadget Warehouse. They're geeky and they're goofy, together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away, he takes them out to play. In Dick's Gadget Warehouse. Barn. Uh, okay, Tom Wynn, W-Y-N-N-E, writes, I noticed you didn't have any new video, so I made a quick video uh, of a stand I got for my Apple devices. I'm um, sorry the volume's a little low. I had to shoot video on my iPad since I needed my iPhone for my demo. Okay, so this all sounds good. Uh, here's Tom's video. Hi, Dick. Hi, Chad. 
I got a little frustrated with all my Apple devices kind of sitting around on the desk trying to plug in cables and keep them charged. So I went on Amazon and I found this little stand. Oh. It really just a stand. You just put the cables that come with the devices through the holes. And then you can just, you know, put the uh, your AirPods in that place. You could put your Apple Watch there. Oh, and it's charging. You can put your phone. Yeah, and the AirPods are charging on the too. Device like that. You can charge it or set it in the deal, or you can set it horizontally and watch a video if you want. That's my device. Thanks a for work. Thanks, bye. That's awesome. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. I have, I've, I've had similar things through the years, um, and some of them work better than others. Sometimes, sometimes you love them, sometimes you hate them. Um, well, that looks great. I, I looked early today. It was on a ridiculously low price. I don't know if it still is. Ooh, Just go to that better. link and see if they changed it already. Uh, ten bucks. It's still ten bucks. Wow, that's nice. It's still ten bucks. Yeah. Wow, that's a good price. That's perfect. yeah. <clears throat> oh, that's interesting. Oh, I didn't see the uh, the stand before. Yeah, it has little little pegs. At the front of the uh, that lightning cable uh, spot, that's really cool. Wow. Yeah, I've so, had so I've had all sorts of these, like some that have Qi chargers where that lightning thing is, some that you you know have a, a spot to put the watch on the back or on the front or wherever. Um, they're always pretty nice, uh, and then. I, I something breaks on them or <laughs> I get frustrated with them when I throw them out. Um, but yeah, that's that's great. That's really good. Cool. Okay, so yeah, I'll put it in, in in the show notes. But if you're ordering it right now while you're watching, and it's because it's ten bucks, it's O L E B R, the Olber three in one Apple charging stand. Perfect. And Tom uh, Wynn, thank you. Uh, I will get you the current issue of Mad Magazine. Two other people sent in videos, but we're always looking for more. Okay. Uh, video, one to three minutes. Anything to do with a gadget. Something you bought and used. Something you bought and are going to throw out because you hate it. Or something that's sitting in a drawer. You can't throw it out because at one time you loved it. All right. Make a little video horizontal and make sure we can hear you, see the gadget and put it up on YouTube. You can cl uh, click unlisted if you want. Then only people with the URL can see it. Send us that URL and it goes to mail at gizwiz.tv. Mail at gizwiz.tv. Don't click private because then only you can see it. Okay. Mail at gizwiz.tv. Perfect. With that, let's move on to the letter. Become the letters. Your lovely letters. Become the Gizwiz letters now. Now. And a very interesting letter here from, I hope I didn't cut his name off, uh, from, he just signed it, Jason. Uh, several years ago, you had a pair of emergency eyeglasses on the show. I saw them at my local optometrist office while getting new glasses, and I grabbed a pair of them from my work bag. Uh, they have been there unopened for years. Today, I was at a location unloading my semi a, a truck driver, uh, the man next to me dropped his glasses and they broke. Uh, they broke in such a way they were unusable. Now he is 300 miles from home and his oh. spare glasses. Holy moly. And you cannot legally drive a truck without glasses. He has no place to get them fixed or get another pair. I made him an offer. Help me unload my truck. And I can get you home. <laughs> I went to my truck, found the emergency glasses. You, you showed on the show. 
Uh, they're called Emergent C. Oh, that's very clever. I forgot that. Emergent C, S-E-E, glasses by Ad Lens. With a few twists of the knobs, he could see very well. The glasses are glasses with moving lenses. So, oh my God, they're $9? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they used to be 40 now, uh, <laughs> The ratings aren't so oh, right. The ratings are terrible. <laughs> yeah. The ratings are terrible. And I'll, I'll, t- I, I'll tell you why. And I realize now I, that he said I picked up a pair at my optometrist. I think they got out of making those. And now they're making a line that's on their website. And I can't even find a price for it. So I assume now that they are way more expensive. And I, the only thing I could find is it just says not available for sale online. Yeah. So maybe you have to get them th- from an <clears throat> optometrist. So I'm yeah. not sure if that really solves the problem. I think I'm when just skimming sh- these reviews, by the way, a lot of people are saying like they they look horrible, like very, like um, well, I guess n- not that one. But some of them were saying like these look ridiculous. I was like, well, oh, that's not I, the well, point. I think, I think they're emergency glasses, <laughs> right? Just for that reason, right? I don't know where mine ended up, but I used to carry them in my suitcase. Thinking if you suddenly lost your glasses, this is you, you, you just dial them until they're clear up oh, Scooter X. Oh my Scooter X has found them. Oh my not gosh. For the, not for the $10 you would expect, but for three. To, oh, there they are. Here's China ships to the U S with $3, $4 shipping. So almost the same price as Amazon. Um, yeah. Eight dollars versus nine dollars. I could definitely see though spending that money to get these ridiculous glasses, especially if you can't drive. You know, you can't do your job. I could also see just getting a second pair of glasses and just having them near your car. Yes, but yes, uh, yes. that's awesome. That's that's a, what a fun story of actually being able to use these and and yeah. uh, saving someone's day. You know, save, saving someone's. Week. No, absolutely. Uh, so he said. Um, we, I, I think they both deliver stuff on Fridays. We'll, we finished unloading my truck and he will give them back when we meet again next Friday. Um, I doubt if he'll ever leave home with a, out a spare right. pair of glasses from now on, uh, regards Jason. Well, Jason, great. That was a very, that was a great story. Yeah. That was a great story. Yeah. I love that. And that, like, oh, if the show goes to very rich people, we'll get a, a, a thing saying, uh, we didn't know where we could get coffee. And then I suddenly remembered <laughs> we had that $4,400 machine. That you so I was on my yacht and my espresso machine <laughs> and went wait. overboard. And then I remembered I had the $4,000 cold brew in my in my spare yacht yeah <laughs> <laughs> well thank you for sending that email in that's great that was yeah. great no that was that was a fun email thank you very much <laughs> well thank uh, you so much also thank you to our patrons over at patreon.com slash gizwiz thank you so much for supporting the show you patrons are amazing thank you thank you Thank you. If you like the Gizwiz, please consider giving back at patreon.com slash gizwiz. You can also head to our website, gizwiz.tv, click on the Patreon tab, and there's a PayPal link if you want to give via PayPal instead of Patreon. However you give, huge thank you to you guys for supporting the show. We really appreciate your generosity. Thank you so much for keeping this show afloat. Speaking of Gizwiz.tv, that's where we record the show live just about every Thursday, 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern Time. There we are live right now. We're going back in time. That was just only a few seconds ago. <laughs> uh, if you head to Gizwiz.tv, the website will update with the live stream Thursday at 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern Time. Otherwise, that'll be the latest episode. You can also see all of our previous episodes there. You can either click episodes at the top or more episodes right here and scroll down and go way back in time. Uh, And then also there you can subscribe 
to uh and we have to do the reveal of uh, the old game and the new game oh i can't i can't wait absolutely can't wait so <laughs> once you're done with gizwiz.tv head on over to gizwiz.biz that's sticky d's website and i'm excited because we get to find out what the heck was it and i did not know this gadget at all uh, oh gonna, okay well the reveal will show you i'm gonna try to scroll past it oh there's this there's okay. There's the old one. So this is There's what it the was. the old one. So. Uh, now, me, I must admit, at least 50 people knew. Okay. So a lot of people. Oh, I didn't let me, realize let me, this. Let me, is, let me put it this way. They, the, most of them said, oh, my mother had this. My grandmother had this. What? That helped it all. Hmm. So it seems like it's no. something. I have no idea. So working through this, it looks like either you blow into these and then you got two little thingies that are off axis and then i i seriously I will go I, to I the no top idea. and you'll that'll help you more okay. up here <laughs> okay okay here i still i'm not, i'm trying to not okay. read anything it is a, a, is it a it's a needle threader oh Oh, so in the back, there's a little place you you wrap a piece of thread around oh. it. You drop the needles in with the eye of the needle down. Oh. And then when you push that little knob, it threads the needle. Interesting. And it has and one on each more, side. Yes. Yes. Because one is for very thin needles oh. and one is for larger needles that have a wider eye. I have uh, no idea. <laughs> I thought that you like you would blow into one of the sides and do something. Uh, well, the, I... the great thing was um, w we got so many funny answers. It's the first time we ever I ran six answers that people didn't win a mad, but I just thought they'd like to see their name on the website Yeah, because, um, miniature adjustable two strand pasta maker. <laughs> okay. Bob Layton. <sighs> Thumb wrestling game like with one. scorekeeping technology. <laughs> Jason. Okay. That makes sense. Spacecraft control panel. They found at Roswell. Okay. Makes okay. sense. Scott. I love this. This is my favorite. A Rolodex for people who only have two things to remember. <laughs> ah. uh, Steve C. Uh, gadget is a manual thumb exerciser. I like that. Carol Marciano. Uh, Two-tone variable pitch pipe. <laughs> That's actually probably what I thought it was. I thought it was what, something. What, yes, exactly. Some instrument is it. what I actually. Uh, David Danielson. A so dual funny. flagpole holder. <laughs> it's not bad. Could it's not be Mr. Yeah. I love this. Early prototype of a self managed taut valve. <laughs> Stu Hunter. Another one of my favorites from Chad Masses. You place this on your forehead and it projects your thoughts in 3D. <laughs> a dual oh. stamp liquor. And this is also good. A dual headphone splitter with individual volume control. That's actually what it looks like. Oh, that is. Doesn't it? That is actually what it looks like. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, wow. and, and then the other one that I thought was funny, an eyeball distance measuring device <laughs> to determine the distance between your eyeballs when ordering new glasses. That's not a bad thing. In fact, a lot of... Uh, uh, virtual reality headsets need that because the position oh. of your eyes can oh, change yeah. the Fresnel of the lens. Um, and so you have to actually kind of know the distance um, that your eyes are. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Interesting. And, and then we, cool. we ran, j just so they have the name online, the six people who we, we finally decided didn't win. Only because it, it, we spent like two or three hours trying to stair step up from mice, uh, cable modem, internet slow, move one of the yellow sliders to a new position. <laughs> oh, this is funny. Uh, uh, a mixer for ketchup and mustard. <laughs> <laughs> Color coding, nostril uh, evacuator. 
prevents. Oh, a nostril cross. stretcher would have been a pretty good one. Oh, that's, a nostril stretcher would have been great. Uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I should have thought of that on the show, actually. Yeah. That's well, anyway, funny. 18 people get Mad Magazine, six people get credit on the website. That's great. Uh, it was great fun. Oh, and then now you can show what the okay, other one so is. Here's newest. the new gadget. This is the whole gadget, nothing but the gadget. And that's it. If you bought it, that's what you would get. This is it's obvious. This is just this is just obvious. This is uh, actually from the set of Nickelodeon. This is the button they used to slap to make slime fall on everybody. So uh, if you think you know what it is, get a guessin' over at gizwiz.biz. Six Mad Magazines for correct answers. Twelve Mad Magazines for funny, clever, hilarious, and interesting answers. So get creative over at gizwiz.biz. Gotta love it. You have two months to get in your answers. Perfect. That about wraps it up for our show. We'll see you next week. I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs>